been speaking with Aboriginal communities in the north about this. What have you been hearing? Reshmi, there's really mixed reviews when it comes to this report from Aboriginal groups. On one hand, some are saying this is, represents baby steps towards accountability. The RCMP finally recognizing a serious problem across Canada, now vowing to take action and prevent further violence against Aboriginal women. Now, others are saying this is a victim-blaming report, saying that it focuses too much on the individual, on Aboriginal women, and less on issues such as systemic racism. Now, there's also more questions for the RCMP. Why is this report coming out now, and what action will they do now that this, these latest numbers have come out? Now, there's also questions of, will the RCMP join calls to launch a national inquiry into the missing and murdered Indigenous women. Now, the RCMP say they're not willing to weigh in on that, but that's a great big debate happening among Aboriginal groups today is, should there be a national inquiry on this? And what are the two sides saying? Well, in the North here, uh, in the NWT, the Native Women's Association is saying that there desperately needs to be an inquiry. They're saying there's a lot of pleads from Aboriginal women saying they're not taking seriously when, when they're putting out calls to the RCMP for, for help. And they're saying that this is a crisis and needs to be addressed immediately and warrants a full-on investigation. Now, I also spoke to a national Inuit organization, Pauktitsu, and they say that they're not interested in a national inquiry. Instead, they say that the resources should be spent on emergency services. They say in 53 Inuit communities, 70% don't have safe shelters for women. Now, they're also concerned that Inuit women won't properly be represented in this inquiry or properly included. Now, I also spoke to the president of the uh, Yukon Women's Aboriginal Council, and she said that they're tired of being treated like second-class citizens. And... They, need an, they needed this inquiry desperately. Now, she also said it may be a little too late for this inquiry now that we know that there's 1,200 missing and murdered Aboriginal women. Now, she also said she, she's very happy that with the work that the RCMP has done in the Yukon, and she hopes that the RCMP will follow suit in, in the rest of Canada. Okay, Rush Angela, me? thank you for this. These developments bring billions of dollars in royalties and revenues to the Alberta government, but they also raise concerns from people who say they are destroying traditional lands and traditional economies. Leaders here say it's changed every aspect of it. Today, Bonnet Rue sat beside his lawyer, silent and expressionless, while the Crown made a case to have him declared a dangerous offender. He's had these charges hanging over his head for the last few years. Today, Prosecutor Mark LaCour said he has no criminal record and any bail conditions he's been under have now been lifted. Angela Starrett, CBC News. The spike in numbers is largely from NWT tourism marketing efforts, including a commercial during the TV reality show The Amazing Race. On top of that, there's also Arctic Air star Adam Beach, who's now the ambassador of the Northwest Territories. The Sawtoo Land and Water Board says it approved ConocoPhillips license because the company provided a comprehensive plan to manage those chemicals. Fracking companies often list the name brand of those chemicals, but they don't have to say what's behind those labels. Milton Berger hopes to have the territory's guidelines ready for public review by this fall. Meantime, Redford says the GNWT has an obligation to respond to its request for an investigation. They're still waiting for that reply. Angela Starrett, CBC News.